Hey everybody, Matt here for Imagine Then Make. Thanks for stopping by. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I cut these sticks out of a regular 2x4. using a circular saw. To make these cuts, I'll be using a corded circular saw along with the rip fence that came with the saw. To mark my cut line, I'll use a ruler, a combination square, and a pen. I've got eye protection, hearing protection. The garage door is wide open for fresh air and ventilation, a little bit of dust control. I've got a piece of quarter inch MDF to act as a spacer that I'll use when I adjust the depth of cut for my saw. I've got this old ratty table that I'm doing everything on. And of course I've got this jig, which I'll describe next. So I've got my jig clamped down. This is the next board I want to cut. The first cut is going to be to split it right down the middle. So I'm going to use this extra block. It's just a six inch uh, length of scrap 2x4, cut a little narrower. I'm going to put it right here. So it's going to act as a push block. So the cut board won't go anywhere. And it also provides a surface right here for the rip fence to land on and to continue gliding up along as it gets to the end of the cut in this board. Let me set up the circular saw and then we'll make a cut. And it'll, hopefully it'll make more sense. All right, let's set up the circular saw. First thing is we're gonna make sure that it's unplugged for safety. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check the current depth of cut for the saw. And you can see that it's cutting through a piece of two by four, which is one and a half inches thick. So we wanna change this just to get a new starting point. So we're going to unclamp the base of the saw. We're going to move the base. So now it cuts a much shallower, makes a much shallower cut. That's just going to be our starting point from which we're going to adjust the actual depth of cut. So right now you can see that it barely rips into the two by four, it certainly is nowhere near going all the way through. Okay, so I did decide to go with a wider piece of scrap plywood. This looks like it's about 3 16 So it's a little thinner than the quarter inch MDF that I was planning to use, but this is a little wider, which gives me a chance to use some clamps. So I'm gonna stick this right on the edge of my jig right here and because I only have two arms I'm going to throw a couple of clamps on here just to hold it in place and I guess I should mention that once I get the saw all set up I don't have to go through all of this over and over again this is just kind of set up all right so now my my plywood is in place and this is going to act as kind of a spacer that's going to determine how deeply into the sacrificial board I'm going to cut. So I'm going to take my circular saw, hold the blade out of the way and set it right on top of the plywood with the blade right up against the edge of my plywood. When I release the blade guard, it's held open because the edge of it's hitting the edge of the plywood. So let me move the camera so you can get a better idea of what it looks like when the saw height or the depth of cut actually gets adjusted. All right, so I got a little flashlight here to try and put some more light on the subject here. And hopefully you can see on the camera that the current depth of cut for the circular saw is very shallow. This little spacer block is just another piece of two by four and put that there so you can see how deep the circular saw is set to cut and right now I hope you can see that it's maybe halfway through the two by four so of course we want to cut all the way through the two by four so I'm going to unclamp 
the base of the saw again and then drop the blade down until the blade just touches the sacrificial board. Then I'm going to reclamp the base of the saw and now the depth of cut for my saw is set. So with my saw still unplugged, I've got my depth of cut set. I remove the clamps. I'm going to take off my spacer piece here. It's about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick, I would say. I pull the blade guard back and lean up a piece of 2x4. This is the next board I want to cut. You can see that the blade will cut all the way through the 2x4 and then some. It should be about 3 sixteenths or the thickness of that plywood spacer. Um, that's how thick it should, how much it should cut into this sacrificial board. So next up, let me mark the cut line and then we'll make a cut. So this is the 2x4 I want to cut right in half. A standard 2x4 is 3.5 inches wide, so half of 3.5 inches is an inch and 3 quarters. So if I set my combination square... To an inch and three quarters right about there and make a mark here using pen to make it easier to see on the camera We're not making fine furniture here, so we're just trying to be close enough. All right. So there's our cut line. With the depth of cut set, now we're going to set the rip fence. So again, we're still unplugged for safety. So, here's our rip fence. It slides into the circular saw like this. And there's a little thumb screw right over here that we can use to tighten it to keep it into position. So what we need to do is hold this blade guard out of the way. So I'm just going to use a little squeeze clamp here. And then half of three and a half inches is an inch and three quarters so we want to set the blade so that it's cutting right at the inch and three quarters mark you know kind of snug that screw up a little bit slide this in get it right to the inch and three quarter mark Again, we're not making fine furniture here, so we're trying to get reasonably close. Okay, so that looks reasonably close to an inch and three quarters. All right, so now we got our rip fence set. The depth of cut is set. Let's load our two by four. So here's our two by four with our cut line. We're gonna take this other little block. It's about six inches. Long, it's just a standard piece of two by four that's been cut a little narrower. We're going to load our two by four in here, take our spacer block, and we're going to push our workpiece up against the spacer block so that these two surfaces, this surface and this surface, are flush. So, what's going to happen here is the circular saw is going to cut this line, hopefully when the rip fence slides along this surface and then as it's getting close to being finished with the cut the rip fence is going to continue sliding on this block keeping the nice straight cut hopefully and then when we get all the way through this the two pieces will separate and then we're able to turn the saw off so let's put our ppe on and make a cut
Now I'm going to make the same cut on another board, only this time I'm going to keep the blade guard out of the way at the beginning of the cut. So I'm going to stick my spacer block in here. Here's the board I'm going to cut. My cut line is marked. My spacer block is lined up so these two surfaces are flush. My rip fence and depth of cut are still set. Got my PPE on. Blade guard is out of the way. Here we go. So now we're going to adjust the rip fence because we want to make this piece an inch and a half wide. This is the cut surface, so we want to trim this off so we wind up with an inch and a half this way because we've already got an inch and a half this way. So my circular saw is unplugged. Move my blade guard out of the way. Okay, I'm going to loosen the thumb screw. Doing it upside down is a little tricky. Okay. And now I want to make this an inch and a half. Slide it in a little bit more. Okay, again, we're not making fine furniture, so that looks pretty close to an inch and a half to me. Tighten the thumb screw. Remove our little squeeze clamp here. Load up our piece, plug in our saw, and make another cut. Thanks very much for watching my video. I hope you got something out of it. My intention was to show you how I'm taking standard 2x4s along with a circular saw and the rip fence that it came with and a simple little jig that I designed and built to make some fairly accurate cuts on the 2x4 to produce these sticks, or I'm actually referring to them as legs. 
Now I need to make a whole bunch more legs because the legs are what go into my latest bookcase design and I want to make a whole bunch more bookcases. Now in my next video, I'll give you the details on the inserts and the threaded rod that go right in here that are used to hold the whole bookcase together. Well, it shouldn't need to be said, but I'm gonna say it anyway. If you wanna try and do anything that you see me do in this video, or in any of my videos for that matter, just remember you're responsible for your own safety, so be smart and be safe.